I want to start by asking you about your influences. Who are the fishermen that you looked up to being a young boy in the Swindon, England? I started off uh, not, not really knowing very much at all and it was, it was actually a friend of mine at primary school who, um, when I started fishing, I didn't have any success at all, but one of my friends at primary school knew what he was doing. He then, you know, he, he was uh, a few steps ahead of me. Then there was um, the village where I grew up. There was there was a, uh, a cobbler, you know, somebody who, you know, who repairs the shoes. And, and he, um, interesting, he, he, was, he was deaf and dumb, but he was the local fishing expert. Okay. And, and um, I would sometimes go down to his, uh, his workshop and we would talk fish there. And well, I say talk, he used to communicate on a, on a piece of blackboard with a, with a chalk, but I would meet him sometimes. And he had, you know, he had big chub, he even caught uh, carp out of the river, um, pike, so you know, not sort of not sort of well-known people. But then I, I started to read a lot, and obviously one of the one of my influences would have been Richard Walker. You know, he's very much transformed the way that, in England anyway, people sort of looked at mm. at fishing. The fact that you can catch large fish intentionally; it's not just a case of chance. Mm. And then I suppose aside from him, I got into carp fishing very much. And at that particular time, there was somebody called Jack Hilton, who was mm. the one of the top sort of carp anglers and had a, had a column in the newspaper. I used to, used to read him a lot. It took you six years to track down and catch a Goliath tiger fish. What keeps you motivated? I, th I think it's unfinished business. If you set yeah. yourself a challenge, yeah. it's, it's difficult to, to walk away from it. And the thing about where the Goliath tiger fish lives, it's, you know, it lives in the Congo. It's, a, it's part of the world that very few outsiders go to. Um, and you won't find you know, other people there. You know, it's, it's just very hard work traveling there. Mm. And, and the first time I went there, I, you know, I was there for two months. I didn't catch anything at all. Mm. Um, so there's one part of me that, that just wants to wash my hands of the whole thing and never go back. Mm. But then you know, I can only really do that once I've got the fish. So it's like next time. I think it's, it's quite similar to, I, you know, I don't like admitting this, it's a bit, it's a bit like a, a gambler. You, know, you yeah. throw away a lot of money. Yeah. I've got to go back tomorrow and win that money yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so it's, it's, I think it's a similar kind of thing going yeah. on. How come you always seem to crack the code with every predator you fish for? How do you get into the mind of the fish? What's your secret? Well, I, th I, think, I think it is important if you, if you are an angler to, to imagine that you are a fish. Um, fish often don't rely on eyesight very much. It's a completely different way they have of experiencing the world. You know, often has a lot to do with touch and scent and vibrations and maybe even you know, electric currents. But, you know, but, but it all comes down to food, really. Where are they going to find food for the, for the minimum amount of effort? Um, and you know, when I'm fishing, normally it's the case that um, I sort of know if, if, if I've got a good chance of getting something, I'm confident that, that, you know, that I've got the right bait in the right place. It's just, it's just a case of the fish now coming along. Yeah. There are times when I'm, I'm a bit sort of, you know, no, something doesn't feel right, doesn't feel right, I've got to yeah. change, then I change something. Doing it on camera, though, adds extra pressure. Yeah. Uh, and, and it sort of concentrates the mind. And I think the fact that we, we tend to shoot for about two weeks, and of that, you know, maybe only a few days of fishing. Mm. So it, it, it means that you have to do it in a very focused way. I mean, I, you know, I like to go somewhere and actually find my way around, but because the time is short, it, it, you, you, you know, there's a limit to how much of a shortcut you can take, but, but, but you know, th th there's pressure on, so it, 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 it focuses the mind. You know, that, that intellectual challenge, it, it sort of, you know, it steps up the pace of that possibly. When we were out fishing this morning, you told me that the big fish often stays at the same place, the hot spot. You also talked about energy being a currency. How's that? Um, you know, any, any, any wild animal yeah. has, has to feed itself, yeah. but it, 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 you know, the, the less energy it can expend doing that, yeah. the better. Uh, yeah. you know, so the, the more energy surplus it's got, the, the, you know, the bigger it's going to be able to grow. Therefore, the more likely it is to, you know, to, to, get, to get into those, you know, all fish are sort of competing for, um, particularly in a river, yeah. um, you can just sit in a spot and let the river bring the fish to you, yeah. sorry, bring the food to you. Yeah. Um, but that's where everybody wants to be. So if you're a big fish, you're going to be able to sort of muscle the others mm. out. But, but you know, you need to become a big fish yeah. first. In your book, River Monsters, you write about you having an obsessive compulsive disorder. In what way has that shaped you into being the angler you are today? Yeah, I wonder if, if that has shaped me. I think it probably has. I think, you know, part of that whole condition is um, it, it's sort of an extension of, it, of attention to detail. Mm. Um, I, you know, I tend to, uh, when I have time anyway, you know, really 
things like tying a knot, mm. you know, it sounds very simple, but, you know, I want that knot to be perfect. Mm. Um, if it's not, you know, even if it's just a very small percentage chance, um, you know, that, that fish, you know, that, that fish could actually get away. Mm. Um, and so, so what I'm doing, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm maximizing the percentages. And I think that does make a difference. Mm. Uh, you know, if, if you're a little bit careless, uh, then there's more chance that something's going to happen and the fish that you've, you, you know, you've waited so long to get on the end of your line, just, yeah. you know, the, something happens, the knot fails or, or whatever. So it's, um, yeah, in a, in a sense, I've sort of harnessed that. It's, you know, because that's something that you can, you can waste a lot of, you know, it can, it, can, it can waste a lot of your energy. And what I've tried to do is actually channel it into something as far as possible.